So what exactly is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence, also known as AI, is a wide ranging branch of computer science concerned with building smart machines capable of performing tasks that typically require human intelligence. What are the four types of artificial intelligence? Reactive machines, limited memory, theory of mind, and self-awareness. So the name of the AI is Synapse, an AI evolution in music mastering. With years of research, 19 million mastered tracks, and over 1 million hours of music, Synapse is the most sophisticated AI-powered mastering engine yet. Funny enough, in editing, I found out that I said Synapse wrong, and then I turned around and used AI to learn how to pronounce it right. Synapse. Yeah. Improved clarity, smarter compression, and superior loudness gives your music instant professional polish at a price that works for your budget. It still seems a little vague in the description, but if we think about the access we have to technology such as the smartphone, which this in itself is equivalent to something in the 1950s known as a supercomputer, we're walking around with supercomputers right now. Uh, I have something called Siri on my phone, and if you have an iPhone, you have access to it too. It is an artificial intelligence database that recognizes voices. For you to get a better understanding, I would have to bring up a book. It's called The AI Superpowers. It's written by Kai Fu Lee, which ironically came up with the speech to text algorithms that you use every day on your smartphone. He worked for Apple. Casper, good morning. Good morning, America. And good morning, Joan. Go ahead. Casper, copy this to make right too. Casper, paste. Casper, select all. Casper, 18 point bold. Casper, word underline. Casper, 72 point italic outline. Casper, open checking. Casper, pay Macy's $65. Casper, pay Pacific Bell, 95.18. Casper, program my VCR. So he created that, and it ultimately birthed Siri, and then he moved on to Google, where Google Assistant is actually useful now. That really wasn't a shot, I promise you. And we take this technology for granted because we don't have a firm understanding of how AI works and what type of AI is being used. So I'll give you a prime example. I will talk about something like AlphaGo, which used deep learning. And deep learning is a form of neural network, which actually uses data collected by human beings and then utilized to set different formulas and solve different problems. So as long as the AI is fed data, then it has the ability to learn anything as long as it has data. So then you start to see why there is a free version of Landers because it needs to collect data to be up to date and to give you the best result. And it's not just pulling up presets that are made by one person or whatever. And if you're wondering, what is another database that pulls up the right suggested information off of a proximity of whatever you're looking up? Well, I just described this right here, Google. Yeah, if we take it a step further, then you can understand the recommendation for YouTube. Like if you are a content creator, why people are watching your video and why they're not, because that you're talking about something that shows a lot of interest and people are searching for that information via Google or whatever search engine that is. Therefore, if you serve that kind of content and people enjoy your content, well, it will recommend that video more or your channel more. And believe it or not, that is done using AI. So just by observing the home feed on my YouTube, uh, you can see that I'm interested in MPC stuff and relationship stuff and basketball, funny voiceovers, funny stuff, and video games. And as you know, my name is Trap Tendo, and I've told you guys plenty of times that I like video games and stuff like that. But how did YouTube learn that? Well, by studying my behaviors and looking at the data that is incoming from my account. Now, if we also think about 
the billions of people that use YouTube on a daily basis and how useful YouTube is as a tool to find out information, then you'll see the actual absolute power that YouTube has in terms of influencing you to purchase a product or even just to figure out how a product works. And that's the vast majority of what big tech companies do these days is find the best way to sell you into something. And if we look at the fact that YouTube is utilized by billions of people and all of that data is used to display all of the information that you enjoy and to keep you on the platform longer, that is the reason why the recommendation system works the way it does because it analyzes that. And if we was to compare that to one human being collecting all that data manually versus an AI, the AI is gonna win every single time because it has access to what? The most information from as many people as humanly possible. If you look at it from this point right here, where if you was to talk about a human being versus an artificial intelligence that has information for over billions of people, and in Lander's case, over millions of songs, I ask you to ask a mastering engineer, how many songs have they mixed within their lifetime that is limited versus an AI that has unlimited time span and could better improve itself in a shorter time span. For kicks and giggles, let's look up the average lifespan of a human being. What is the average life span of a human? All right, let's go. So it says 72.6 years. So we can clearly see by doing some Google research that the average human being lives up to be 72.6 years. Let's round it up. So 73 years for the average male or female. Let's just say you average it about one song a day, like mastering one song a day. That would be 365 days times 73. So let's do the math here. I'm gonna pull up the calculator and let's times 365 days times 73. So given the life expectancy is 73, so around 73 years, that's how long you will live, and you mixed one track or song a day, it would average out to be 26,645 songs within a lifetime. So I asked basically the same question on my community tab just to see where people's minds were at. And the poll reads as this, is there an audio engineer around that mixed or mastered over 1 million songs? I'm trying to see something. And it was 663 votes, 8% said yes, and they can prove that, we'll explore that in a second, and then 92% said no. So it's kind of obvious that people understand the concept that I'm trying to display in this video of how impossible it is. One of the main comments that stuck out to me was this one. Let's assume you work 100 years as an audio engineer without any free days. This will be 36.5 work days. That means you must master 28 tracks per day for 100 years straight to finish. Good luck finding one. The next one was pretty funny. It was by Perkulum Audio and he says the only way to do that would be to go into the Dragon Ball Z hyperbolic time chamber and emerge as a year later as a Super Saiyan producer. <laughs> but as I went down, it seemed like most people could say that it's impossible. And that was, you know, a saving grace. And that's not even considering that your cognitive abilities will vary during the ages of one through six and then trial and error on top of learning how to do things. So you have to learn, unlearn, and many other different factors. And that's not to diminish what engineers have accomplished. So audio engineers are special and they should be treated as such, but there's not enough data that they can intake within their life expectancy. That's what I'm trying to say. However, AI doesn't have that life expectancy and it can learn on the fly within seconds. And we all know that computers are far more superior than we are because we utilize them daily for calculations just like I did right there. So 
if you're factoring in all of that stuff and how fast the computer can think and if it has the data, which it can do that through neural networks. Yeah. You, all you're doing basically is defining the exact functions that is needed for the database to update and improve over time. So you can't do a million songs, even if we look at it from this way alone. If you did a hundred songs a day, that will be about 2 million songs, given that you can, given all of the data that I have presented. It's impossible is what I'm trying to say. So here's a track that I'm mastering for my LP, which is ironically called machine learning, by the way. And it sounds like this right here. All right, so I'm not gonna play the whole entire track, but what I want to do is make you understand a couple of steps that you need. So the first step is to level your tracks. Now I could do a whole video on that and I will for every each individual DAW that I know about. And that is important because most people's misunderstanding about the mastering process is that they can take a bad mix and the mastering engineer or the mastering software or whatever you use will make it better. And that is incorrect. So you need to understand the mixing process before you go to the mastering process. It's very important. Step number two, when you are mastering it all together, I think it's an important practice to add headroom. So what you wanna do is go to the output of your master bus and lower it to about six dB. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower mine to six dB. You see me doing that right now. And that way it will sound lower, but in the mastering process, when it goes and does all the data analysis, it will have enough headroom to use compressors and limiters and to do a bit of EQing to get the sweet spots. So in another DAW like FL Studio, you would go over here and you will roll back this knob at the top left part of the screen until you see it says negative six dB. Once you get that, which is, <laughs> I'm messing up on it, uh, you will see it right over here. It says negative six dB where all the information is for that parameter. Also in hindsight of that, you can do that in the mixer too as well, and you can get a deeper detail. So if I was to go negative six dB over here, then you'll see it in the information at the top left side of the screen. And yeah, I'm close enough. I mean, it's FL, I'm sorry. In Ableton Live, you can just simply go to the far right side of your screen where it says master and then turn it down 6 dB and then make sure uh, you can actually see clearly uh, where your track sits. Let's lower that. To sum things up, Negative six is where your track should be hitting. If you do reduce the negative six dB, your track still might be too loud. I do apologize for that, but you want the track to have as much dynamic range as possible. So when it goes through the spectral analysis process of the AI, that the AI can calculate uh, the proper dynamics of what the compression, the limiter, and the EQ, or whatever else it needs to apply to that track. Step three is to export your track after everything has been measured out and you're happy with your mix. So I'm gonna go over here and choose that so I can export the track. It's gonna be a two track, so I just need track one and two, so it's a stereo track. One thing I would caution people about in the exporting process is definitely the choices between uh, doing a WAV file or an MP3 file. Remember, an MP3 file is a compressed file, yes. So it does use compression and it will give that track a little bit more boost than what it was. So use an uncompressed track, which is a WAV file. So let's do that and we'll save it on the desktop. And then it'll go through the exporting process and you'll be good to go. You should be able to do this process on groove boxes like the MPC Live X01 or whatever you choose to use. Uh, on the MPC Live X1, you could just hit this sign right here, which is the eyeball sign, and then go to the crown, and that is your master bus right there. So you would just turn it down right here. And then you would just give it a listen and see 
if it's good enough for that process. Also, you can double click this parameter and get a closer approximation when you play the track. So the next step is pretty simple. Just go to lander.com and just put in your information. Uh, you can sign up for free and or you can log in if you have an existing account. And if you're wondering, yes, you can use the service totally for free. Uh, there is a reason for that that I will explain a little later. Once you're logged in, just go to master to start the process. You can either drag and drop your file in right here or you can go about the old school way and just click on that and go to the respected folder. It's on my desktop, so I will pull up the file. Let's select the WAV file of this. And then it will go through the process It's uploading. So in between the process of it uploading, it's listening to the track to get the data necessary for it to master it properly. And that's where the free service comes in because then you think about, well, it needs data so that it can improve the AI. And this type of AI is neural network, which needs a massive amount of data built into servers so it can access all of this information. And from that information, from the millions of songs that are uploaded to Lander, the AI improves every single bit of the time, even collecting little data as far as what preset that you use. And that is the preset that the AI has given you and not just some default preset like a VST plugin where it might say a particular master bus. This is catered to that through data analysis. So you see that it is generating previews and went through a couple of different processes of data analysis, analyzing through spectral analysis, the actual waveform that came through. The WAV file is uploading, is generating a preview, and now the preview is completed and now we'll take a listen. Once you click on listen, you can go between the original and the master. You can even do volume matching and so forth. And then there is reference. So you can upload a master track and give more data to the AI that is on Lander. So now what I'm gonna do is go from the original to the master and then see what the results will yield. The original right here. And here is the master. Now, from what I hear so far, that's not what I really want. I see it has balance, warm, and open for styles. And then you have more information right here about what those different things are. So choose between three unique mastering styles, each with its own character and feel. So the first one is warm, which is vintage warmth with softer compression for thick, smooth sound, balance, controlled with focus on balance, clarity, and depth, open, modern, open sound with emphasis on punch and presence. So we're gonna play with the different versions of those. So the first one we're gonna listen to is balanced. Let's hear open. Now let's hear warm. Between the three, I like warm and open. Balance is really good, I think, but it brings a little bit of that lower mid frequency to the stream middle. And that's great for uh, vinyl mastering because that is necessary in that art form. But for me, I'm just gonna have it on streaming services right now, and then I'll probably do a balance, so I'll do open. So now we can choose between the loudness, and it says set your mastering loudness level. So you can go low, medium, or high. So let's go ahead and do medium. Let's hear it in medium. Now let's hear it in high. Now let's hear it in low. Judging from the characteristics of this track, I think low would be the best option because there is so much mid and high frequency in that beat. So I don't want to make that so prominent in the track versus the bottom end. So let's do that. Now from here, I'm gonna create this master. So the next thing that you will notice, it will say choose a format. It says uncompressed 
industry standard for distribution. And then it tells me how many uh, WAV files that I can do within this free service. And let's hit continue. And it says your master will start shortly and it will be located at the bottom right side of the screen here. Now that everything is done, it says try mastering revision. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just play the master in its whole entirety. So put on your headphones, studio monitors or whatever and give it a listen with me. And from that preview, I'm pretty impressed with how Lander handled that particular master track. And I don't really have any qualms with that. It was full, uh, the bass seemed to be where it needs to be in the mix. Of course, that has a lot more to do with the mixing process than the mastering process and whatever sound that you select. But uh, for the most part, nothing was really fucked up. I mean, I had to be, yeah, I had to say it like that. If you don't like anything that you heard, uh, you can go and do a revision and if you do like what you heard you can even release music because they can distribute your music over there at lander if you want to it is pretty pricey but hey it is what it is and then you can download the file or share it and there is a hamburger menu right here where it says more actions and then you'll see it from right here and they start from remaster create new format move to folder rename and delete if you're not happy with your results, you can just get rid of it altogether. So I'll choose download because I actually liked it. And then you're greeted with a file at the bottom left side of the screen on Windows at least. You can see that the file itself says Lander House Tendo instead of it just saying House Tendo for this example. And that means that it's been mastered. So the biggest opinion that people have about Lander's mastering process is all it does is bring you presets and you're just uploading a file just for you to do something that you could do in a DAW. When that is the most ignorant statement a person can make, you owe Lander some due diligence enough to do the research. And that could be done by looking at the main page. Revolutionary AI Mastering. Lander's audio mastering gives you the power of artificial intelligence and data from over 10 million master tracks professional sound that fits the future of music production as vague as that seems there's a lot more research that you need to do in terms of understanding how the ai works <laughs> 